this is you fly it light sport aircraft Well, hi folks. We're here in Deland, Florida with Dennis Carley, and we've got an update here for 2024. And uh, Dennis has been busier than a one-armed paper hanger. I mean, but I'm gonna let Dennis talk because he does a much better job than I. Dennis? <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you too. I think it's been, what, since you were here last time? Sometime, summertime last yeah, year, maybe? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, you've know you been here for half hour, 45 minutes this morning, walking around the shop, looking at stuff. You see how busy it is, and uh, not a whole lot has changed since the last time you were here. We do have a couple of you know, changes we've made in minor things to the airplane and so on. Um, uh, we're still plugging away full speed ahead every day and still have long lead times because of the demand for the airplanes. And uh, it's, uh, I may have said this last year, but it's its all good. Oh, yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Gosh. Well, now your your outlook uh, looks good. I mean, you're, you're, you've got more work than you can handle. Yep. But I mean, at least it's something that, that is a good thing to have. Oh, yeah, a, yeah. A good issue to have, yep. I guess. Uh, and I, I have to, I can't help but to, to, to talk about this, but you had a customer in here yeah. that uh, I was filming a bit, getting picking up an yep. airplane, and he was just as, I saw the big grin on his yep. face. He was happy as, as could be. So yep. tell me about, the, you're all involved in everything. Oh yeah, well he, uh, he came, he flew in from, uh, he's from the northeast part of the country, mm -hmm. uh, flew in yesterday, uh, picked up his rental truck and picked up his supplies and loaded up this morning. He's taken a little bit of flight training before he leaves. He's on the road uh, tomorrow morning, he said two or three day trip to get back, uh, back up to where he's going. But right. you took some video of him coming, you know, loading the stuff up into the uh, uh, truck that he had took us an hour or so to get it all in there and packed up and ready to go and he's he's on his way he'll be flying within a week or two probably That's fantastic yeah. well i was very impressed although you impressed me anyway <laughs> but you were in there just uh, just you know helping out i think you you'd run this place probably by yourself <laughs> no. obviously you wouldn't get as many airplanes out but i mean at least you've got all the operation oh yeah and then we was you know I, you, we saw we put the fuselage up in there we called two or three guys over from another hangar and they came over here to help us wheel it up in there but yeah it's uh, a lot of our customers have us ship the airplane to them yes uh, with a transport company that's moved hundreds for us over the years but sometimes we get guys that do want to come down and load it up themselves sure. so we're always happy to help them get it all loaded and packed up and safe in there for their their trip back home oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot to be said about that hands-on, both your hands-on and, and their hands-on for picking this up and making sure everything is just the way they want it. And uh, that's, uh, that's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it gave him the opportunity. You know, we've got a couple of planes that are put together in the hangar across the way here. So we took him over and showed him airplanes that are completely assembled. So he sure. has some kind of first-hand knowledge of what it looks like, a little easier for him to put it back together. Exactly. Yeah, I was uh, taking a little shots here, uh, video, uh, in between, mm -hmm. you know, and I noticed you've got a number of airplanes that are that are getting ready to go yeah. for completed kits, and uh, I think that uh, you've got a certain amount of workflow that you do, mm -hmm. and you. I think last time we said it was like 40 to 60 a year that you put out between kits and finished planes, yep. and that that right there is is hopefully is keeping up with the demand but you're still behind schedule because there's so many people that, that love this airplane yeah so it's a uh, you know it's kind of a double-edged sword we we have plenty of employees and we you know we push things through as uh, as quickly and as efficiently as we can do it right but there's always a backlog because there's always a just off the charts demand and we you know i've we bought this company, what, th uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and there has never been one day where we weren't backed up with, with orders. And sometimes, you know, it's it was five or 10, and sometimes it was 30, and it right. really just, it, right. it goes through that cycle. But I can tell you, though, in the last four years, five years, it has always been just 20 or more, yep. and sometimes, you know, even above 30 that were wow. backed up. And uh, we have, we've made progress, once we got past the horrible part of the supply chain issues, we've made progress with 
getting things done quicker, but at the same time, the demand has gone up, so it, the, the lead time has just sure. pretty much stayed about the same. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I wanted to run this by you. Uh, I filmed uh, a young lady who flew from South Carolina oh, to yeah. Oshkosh. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to be able to cover some of that, that activity to get her there. But I'll tell you what, I have never seen the kind of enthusiasm for anybody's airplane. Oh, yeah. Other than the 103. <clears throat> and uh, they, they were great folks. Oh, yeah. And that airplane, that's been up there twice. It, it yeah. flew four years before that. Yep. And uh, I mean, just the, I look at that and I think, hey, cross country. You don't think of the 103 as cross country, but on the other hand, uh, what a great adventure oh, yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. And that's cross country. You know, it's cross country in 45 minute or 60 minute increments, exactly. but it's still still cross country. And exactly. I don't know if you know it or not, but she's flying it down to Sun and Fun. Uh, oh, I, I talked to her dad oh, last great. week, and, and yeah, they're bringing it down to, to Sun and Fun. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that first of all, the 103 provides such a great experience locally yep. and I get comments on my channel about well gee how far can we fly and the same thing with the electric they say oh yep. well gee whiz it doesn't seem like but you know what <laughs> you, 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 you've got an airplane that you can use in a way in which that suits what you're trying to do yeah yeah and we have you know we do have people ask us sometimes how far will it fly how long right. will it fly right. and but the reality is you know, I've been flying this type of airplane for 25 years yeah. maybe even more right. I can't tell you the last time I went more than 45 minutes or so, and the vast majority of the time, I can still see the airport I took off from the entire time I'm flying, because I'm, I'm not trying to go from point A to point B, not using it for a cross-country airplane. And there are some guys that do, and you know it will meet that need if you want it to on an occasional basis, but for fun, your brothers how yep. often do they go on long trips yep. most of the time it's just up for exactly. a little bit of time and they're, and they're out of the system and they're back exactly yeah. right exactly right we've got an airplane that will fly long distances if you want it to if you want to take a point a to point b trip or you know south carolina to oshkosh or right. sun and fun wherever it may right. be most guys that fly this type of airplane they're looking for something they can get in in the mornings get in in the evenings go up for 30 minutes 45 minutes get it out of their system put it back in the hangar and do it again you know next friday or whatever it may be exactly. and uh i may have said this before but you know i've been flying this type of airplane for 25 years maybe even longer I can't tell you the last time I was on a two hour stretch sure. or an hour and a half stretch. It's 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. I was I was going to ask you about the two seater. Yep. And I know that uh, that you have been doing a lot of other things. You got a good reason why the two seater <laughs> probably isn't ready to show. No, right it's now. not. No, you know, we, we, we basically have that project. It, it's been in the same state of completion for the last year year and a half or so uh, it, it's with the exception of the wing jig we need to build a different wing jig because the right. wing is bigger cord and bigger span yes. uh, the rest of the stuff is all d designed and whatever we just are so busy it's oh, sure. almost impossible for us in the last year and a half or so to find the time to complete that now Absolutely. we we are going to do it we do right. still plan to to complete it and every time somebody asks me I say six months and they ask me again it's six more months but that's uh, we're we hope to have it done sometime next year. We are going to work on it some this uh, this summer and this fall. You know, we had the fuselage up there at Oshkosh a couple years ago, and there was lots of lots of interest and you know demand for it, and people who wanted to be on the list to get one. And and we all we told them all the same thing: when we get it done, it'll be out there. If you want to place an order for it, then that's that's fine. Um, it, it is the the process of designing that and making the prototype parts and whatever is thoroughly enjoyable for me i'd rather stand here and do that than anything else right. uh, but by the same token we you know we've got airplanes and orders and whatever and that's the that's been the focus sure. so, yeah so we did about a year ago uh, we decided that we were going to not put together as many ready to fly airplanes here at the factory we were going right. to farm that out if you will to um, guys that you know, dealers are guys that we know that have built many of these before where they could mm -hmm. take our kit, assemble it to the customer's specifications, and then that would go to them as a ready to fly from that point. So we have, we've done that. We have uh, uh, outsourced uh, that. It's worked very, very well for us so far. And uh, we will continue doing that. Uh, it, it, makes, it makes us, 
it gives us more ability to get things out of here a little quicker. Sure. And we can get right. we can get kits out much much quicker than we can ready to fly. We always have been able to. Right. Uh, that outsourcing the ready to fly stuff has even increased the ability to get the kits out a little bit quicker. Great. Yeah. Great. It gives us it just lets us be more efficient is really what it comes down to. That's the bottom line. And it, it, you know when we started this and we were selling eight or 10 airplanes a year, it didn't really matter if we were efficient. When it's 40 or 50, oh, yeah. we need to maximize that wherever we Absolutely. can. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I know that you got a great crew here and, uh, and you obviously uh, uh, run this business and you run it very well. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate being able to get an update from you. And uh, it's, it's, uh, this is one of my favorite games here is, <laughs> yeah. is uh, 103. Yep. And uh, I, I thank you again. Yeah, sure. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And, and Happy New Year here. Yeah, yeah. 2020. Three months into it now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are MZ engines, 201 and 202, and they're in various stages here, some with gearboxes, some with uh, reduction drive, some electric start, some pull start. Um, and that, the MZ motors, the, the crankcase, the Connecting rods, the cylinders, the pistons, that is the same on the 201 and the 202. The only real difference is the 202 is fan cooled, has a shroud so it's pushing air across, the, forcing air across the cylinder heads, mm -hmm. and that is a dual carb motor. The 201 is a, basically a derated version of it that operates off a single carburetor okay. and is free air cooled. Right. And the, so that's, you know, 45 horsepower and 63 horsepower. And then if you see this is gearbox. All the gearboxes have a centrifugal clutch that's uh, um, standard equipment in it. So when you start the engine at idle, the prop doesn't spin. As you advance the throttle, the clutch engages and starts uh, giving you prop spinning and thrust. Um, electric start on this one, pull start on this one. This is another 201 that's, uh, that's set up for uh, electric start. Okay, very good. Well, that was that was quick and easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was shooting down the line, and I said, "Man, look at all those <laughs> engines. They must all be different." <laughs> yeah, no, two two different engine models, and then you see the ones in the back here. That that's oh, yeah. actually how we crate them up when we're going to ship them to a customer. Oh, let me get another shot of that. Yeah. Okay, Dennis, what's this big one in the box? <laughs> well, you know, uh, we. We put some of these motors on here, but a lot of them get shipped out to our customers. If it's a, a kit customer that's putting it on and the transport company comes here to pick up the kit, then we generally just ship the motor um, with him without crating it in a wood crate like this. Right. If it's going by UPS or FedEx, you know, they do a real good job of uh, handling stuff a little roughly sometimes. So yeah. we, you can see the metal cage that's in here. It's uh, on shock mounts on that metal cage. We enclose that in a wooden crate Oh, wow. And that tends to get them there. I don't think we've ever had any of that stuff damaged from point A to point B. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that definitely uh, that makes me want to crawl in a crate because sometimes <laughs> I, I get I get a little bumpy road. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, you know it's about 140 pounds when we get it all packed up, so it's yeah. heavy. And we put handles on the side of it, and and you know our drivers are great, but a lot of times when it gets handled from point A to point B, it might change uh, trucks and whatever several times, and there's a, a likelihood that it gets uh, gets beat up a little bit so we try to minimize that fantastic well thank you very much yeah Let, uh, let's move over to another area and I'll, I'll capture you again all right sounds good yeah. now did you just do a little house cleaning there <laughs> I just moved the broom out yeah. of the way <laughs> I don't think that qualifies <laughs> Man, you got a lot of aluminum. Here. We do, yeah, and uh, you know we use about 20 different sizes of tubing in the in the construction here. Some of it we use a little bit per plane, and others we use you know several sticks. Right. Um, but if, you know you look at this stuff here, and this is a I don't know how many are up here, lots, but w yeah. we use a lot of those that particular size in the aircraft. So um, all of the aluminum, or the vast majority of the aluminum is 6061 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. The steel parts like the landing gear, you know, like the gear legs and the nose fork and the axles, that's 4130 uh, chromoly steel. Right. And uh, that is it. There's a very small amount of the 4130. Everything else is, uh, is aluminum and uh, um, it's all the, the frame is put together here with gusset plates and blind rivets. When we send it out to a, a customer, we send 150 or 160 blind rivets is with the kit or packed with the kit. 
So there's a minimal amount of riveting left for the customer to do once they get the, uh, the airframe. Right. Gosh, that's great. Now, um, and of course, you, you've, got, you've got everything in this bin here to basically almost everything to make a kit. I got stuff over my head yeah, here yeah. that we can point to too, yeah, the wings and Yep. And so this is surfaces. this is the bulk of it. I don't think there's any spar tubes in here, wing spar tubes, but every everything else is pretty much here. And uh, then the up above your head is the racks that hold the finished components, like wing panels and control surfaces, vertical fins, those things are all we build those in a jig, we hang those up and then when we're ready to ship out a kit, we just simply Take the fuselage that goes with that particular airplane, pull all the rest of these parts together and get them ready to go, and then it's ready to ship out as a, as a kid. Fantastic. All right, thank you, Dennis. Yeah, sure. Hi, folks. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and as always, I appreciate your comments. And a special thanks to Dennis Carley for a very thorough update on the Aerolite 103 of 2024. Until next time, take care and thank you so much for your support.